Well guys, the moment we've all been waiting for, Dystopia is finally here. Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back. Today we have a jam packed show. We're going to be talking about a lot of things. Basically, I got myself some notes, I had a little bit of show notes and I was thinking to myself, oh maybe I'll break this down to a few episodes. but. As I was putting it all together, I figured, you know what, I think this has to just be one episode. There's just so much to say, so much to talk about. And um, again, as you guys can see, if you guys are watching this right now, I'm wearing my uh, don't, th th don't thread on me. All right, don't tread on me. Sorry. <laughs> my English also goes sometimes. Anyways, my don't tread on me uh, t-shirt. And I got my, uh, you know, uh, Communist Party hat as well on. And... Uh, you got my Mexican flag, we got American flag, we got the Cuban flag, we got Lambo, you know, we jam-packed, I said jam-packed. But anyways, guys, we have a lot to talk about today. Um, if you guys remember last episode, um, I was walking and talking, and I was basically, um, you know, walking and talking out here in Mexico, and I was telling you guys and talking to you guys about the fact that uh, I think that right now what's going on in the whole world is the fact that most likely it seems like China is uh, at war with the US something insane like that and um, you know we're gonna touch on that in a second but what I really wanted to touch on touch on today was the fact that there's just so much craziness going on all over the place right now I mean we thought that things were crazy before we got to 2020 all of a sudden as soon as 2020 started and a few you know weeks into it everything just went off rails I mean basically you know as soon as we got it over January everything just went off the rails and um, you know a lot of people out there already kind of saw the signs and saw a lot of this coming in one shape form or another no one really saw the whole virus situation but a lot of us out here kind of saw something coming I remember back in December late last year I was calling for the fact that hey I know in January or some point early on in the year um, we were gonna see a major economic downturn um, We've seen that, we're, we're witnessing that right now. Again, no one, you know, really thought um, that we were gonna be in the situation we are right now. Um, but again, at the same time, we knew that there was gonna be some sort of uh, event. We didn't know what kind of event, we didn't know how this thing was gonna play itself out, but now that we're here, we're like, okay, here we are. Now, you know, as I was trying to figure out, you know, how I'm going to be talking about a lot of this stuff, you know, I, I started to talk, I started to do a little bit of uh, extra research, a little bit just to freshen my memory on the on the 1920s, you know, the Roaring Twenties, and uh, basically, um, yeah. Long story short, we have only begun this whole thing. Even though the economy is tanking right now, and um, we still have a long ways to go downwards. We were witnessing something very similar um, during the 1920s. But what was happening back then was the fact that, um, again, you know, 100 years later, when we remember the 1920s, we remember a lot of, uh, you know, opulence and a lot of uh, money being thrown around. And a lot of, um, you know, the, the rich people were the ones that were the celebrities. And uh, we had a lot of new technologies like, um, like film and radio and um, like a refrigerator and a toaster and, and things like a washer and dryer and so on and so forth. And, uh, you know, all of a sudden, like it's, it almost seemed like overnight, a good majority of the population was all of us was thrown into the future. Um, they were brought, you know, the, all of these awesome things like cars and other technologies, um, as I just mentioned before. But on top of that, you know, there was a lot of, most people could not afford any of this stuff. Um, and so this new stuff called credit was introduced and thus created this humongous artificial boom. Now I'm not going to delve too deep into the 1920s. You guys can, uh, war, you know, look into that yourself. But if you look at what was happening during the 1920s, like really what, what was happening back then, you see there's a lot of similarities and a lot of correlations to what was just happening and what's going to continue to happen. Because right now, as we're looking at the whole economic um, scene, as we're looking at what's basically what's happening, at least from the U.S. Uh, standpoint, we're we're seeing right now that they are pumping money in, into the market and you know they are br basically printing money out of thin air and pumping everything all right up into infinity and beyond right now this bubble has burst but yet 
they are figuring out they are they are figuring out a way in which to print even more and keep propping this bubble up. But as you guys already know, um, a sinking ship just because you're taking water out of the sinking ship doesn't mean it's not going to continue to sink. And that's kind of where we're at now. And again, if you know what was happening during the 1920s, you saw that there was a lot of uh, poor people, a lot of unemployment, a lot of uh, you know horrible situations, just like we're witnessing right now. And we're going to witness because it still hasn't even started. We have to remember that you know basically when it comes down to the economy shutting down um officially it just got shut down a few weeks ago maybe a month ago but for the for you know for it's not like you know even though we've been dealing with this virus situation now maybe for a few months or longer depending on what country you're in at the moment um it doesn't mean that uh you know this whole thing just kind of came to a stop you know what i mean like really all at the same time it, it didn't it, it seems like it did but it kind it really didn't um it's still almost coming to a complete halt. I mean, it's basically already at a complete halt. It really, really is. But we're now really gonna start seeing the cracks as um, this halt really starts to take hold. You know, meaning that supply chains are gonna start drying up. You know, you can see less and less things at your local store, your local wherever. Um, you're gonna see, you know, a lot more civil unrest and turmoil. And we're starting to see this already around the world. And, um, you know, now come to full circle to what is going on because look, it's no, uh, it's no secret that I spend the majority of my time out here in Mexico. And in fact, during this whole uh, situation that's uh, taking place, I decided I'm gonna stay out here in Mexico for a lot of reasons. You know, basically because I feel I have more liberty and freedom and um, and, and and just a more. Uh, more of a chance of survival out here as I do in the United States. Now, again, this is just my own humble opinion. This is just my own, uh, you know, thoughts on the situation. That's why I'm out here. You know what I mean? Um, we all have our own completely different uh, uh, opinion on this situation, but this is just my own. But basically, you know, back to what I was saying. Um, I thought that, you know, I uh, saw a place like Mexico, all right, and, and other places around the world, they would kind of be immune to this whole... Uh, closure you know the closure of the economy the closure of the country the closure of uh of uh, so many things and then to the added extent of the ridiculousness that we're seeing in some parts of the world now i know as i'm saying this i know a lot of you people out there are going to start um disagreeing with me in fact a lot of you guys are like hey you're scratching your nose and you're doing all that yeah guys because again i'm not as scared of this thing um being scared is you know a great way to get yourself really sick okay um believing a lot of this propaganda is is a great way to really you know make yourself um feel unhealthy really quick all right in fact i encourage you guys to do the complete opposite i encourage you guys to treat this like the strongest flu you've ever seen in your life and how would you treat that okay you already know what to do take some vitamin c take some zinc you know um lounge around do nothing all right just chill out and relax especially now in fact before i forget um there's a lot of people out there that are stoners that are 420 aficionados and um a lot of you guys have been looking forward to 2020 um but specifically april 20th and or again april 20th of 2020 you know what i mean the ultimate 420 ultimate 420 day ultimate 420 month and um you know a lot of you guys out there are thinking to yourself oh my god this is like the worst 420 scenario possible because look at everything's closed down and look how you know messed up everything is and blah 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 but the reality is is that if you're a real stoner out there this is actually the best possible scenario for 420 because again the government is actually asking you to stay at home and do absolutely nothing except watch tv eat chips, smoke weed all day, play video games, and don't ever get out of the house. I mean, again, for anyone out there that is like, oh man, this is the suckiest 420 ever. I can't go to my 420 festival. I can't go do this or I can't go do that. Look, man, you're not a real stoner. Sorry to break it to you, okay? Sorry, all right? You know, anyone that really just likes to smoke a lot of weed, look, I like, you know, I like to partake myself, okay? But again, when I was really thinking about it, you know, the other day, I was like, huh. You know, I was even going to make a whole episode on it, but I was like, you know what? Nah, man, I don't got time for all that shit. You know, I got a lot of weed to smoke. By the way, I shouldn't do that. I should just... 
<laughs> all right, all right. Sorry, I'm going off topic here, but. You know, back to the point I'm making. Um, what I was trying to make, you know, one of the main one of the main topics uh, that I really want to talk about, you know, as I talk about all the things I'm going to be talking about today. By the way, in case you haven't already figured it out, um, this is going to be a very long episode. I'm going to try to make this as long an episode as possible. Also, to encourage a lot of you guys out there that enjoy my content, um, to also check me out on podcast form and to also uh, bring you guys back in because you guys already know there's a lot of you guys that have been following me for a long time and you know that I go on and on and on and on and I was always struggling at first you know when I used to first start doing YouTube videos I used to go really long and I used to struggle with that and then I started making them short and then it's just back and forth and back and forth so now that we're you know kind of like in this scenario that we're all in now where everything kind of has to go back to the drawing board and we're you know everything has to we got to go back to rethinking everything going forward because again that's basically what this episode is going to be about um so well, so so is this okay so now i'm going to be going and making all kinds of content if you guys ever not figured it out already and so in particular this one i'm going to go very long before when i used to make long episodes they were very hard to listen to i mean i listen to them now and i'm like god i can't believe it. i'm so embarrassed but now as I listen to a lot of things that I talk about and I'm more comfortable in front of the camera, comfortable in front of you guys and the whole deal, I've done live streams and, and all these other things, um, well now I can make better quality content. I can actually sit here and talk for over an hour or 45 minutes or what have you like I do in the live streams and it's fire. You know, it's all kind of good stuff. But the thing is that as you guys also already know, I'm a little bit sometimes scatterbrained and uh, you know, unless I'm talking about a specific subject, I'm, you know, I'm all over the place. And so that's why, um, you know, I, I, I understand that like um, listening to me in podcast form would probably be best for a lot of people because that way you guys can just listen and listen and listen and um, you don't have to worry about having um, the, the YouTube video open in your pocket as you're walking around, which again, it doesn't really matter today because in the, the today's world, we're all stuck at home. Turning it on. Nothing happens. There, I blew on it, and it works. So back to what I was saying. In last episode, and I touched on earlier in this episode already, the fact that I think that right now what's going on is that China and the US are at war. Even though they're not telling the public, the, the world doesn't know something, you know, but something is definitely up. They're at some sort of uh, some sort of uh, conflict is uh, already been ta is taking place as we speak right now, and I mean, look, who really knows in a sense what's going on because we know that the people that are really in power are the bankers of the world. All right, I'm not going to name them because there's a lot of them, but you guys know who the central bankers of the world are. In fact, um, these central bankers are ones that are behind the Federal Reserve, that private entity, that private company that prints money out of thin air and lends it to our own government henceforth every single dollar that you get is debt by the way if you want more information on that do a little bit more research check out mike maloney hidden secrets of money if you want more information let me know in the comments and i will guide you there but as i was saying every single unit of uh, every single dollar every single currency unit is a unit of debt every time that you use money you are using debt and accruing debt in a lot of cases that's why i was talking about the 2020s and i mean the 1920s and how they correlate to the 2020s because again as of right now um the whole world economy is going down to shitter for lack of a better description, and um, what is the world deciding to do? Well, specifically, the United States government is that, well, they're giving free money. First of all, they're giving a $1,200 check to every American, but they're also giving free money to certain entities out there. Basically, the certain entities that are getting that free money are like corporations and big businesses and stuff like that. And for all the small mom and pop shops out there all the small businesses out there every single small business you know who you are you guys are getting shafted again 
All right. Because again, I, I mean, I talk about uh, a lot in my Discord, you know, and all the communities that I have, you know, where I, where I, where I chat with a lot of you guys and back, back and forth. You know, we've been talking about the PPP loans, the SBA loans, you know, um, you know, all, all of these things, okay? All of these uh, new um, programs. And yeah, you know, at first when they were talking about them and launching them, great. As of uh, now, horrible. You know, they just want you to accrue more debt and um, again, reading between the lines, reading between the fine print, you know, a lot of these uh, debts could, you know, they say that they could be free. Oh yeah, you don't have to pay them back, but when you really look at the fine print, oh no, wait a minute. You know, these, these are gonna be like school loans, I meaning they're gonna be around forever type of thing. So, like I said, it's not good. It's, it's just more enslavement as we move along. They're using this new emergency, this new medical emergency to de declare medical martial law and because of that all of a sudden we the people are losing our freedoms even more just like back during the 9-11 crisis where overnight we basically you know lost a lot of our freedoms whether it was by signing of the Patriot Act or by signing of other legislations uh, soon afterwards we basically lost all our freedoms and we had no idea that we even lost them because we were all under the impression that we have to go you know get those freaking terrorists you know everybody gung-ho um, the world back then was extremely the American world was extremely left and all of a sudden overnight everybody wanted to join the army and go kill some terrorists Right? How funny. You remember that? Anyone out there is old enough to remember? And now, where are we right now? Just a few months ago, there, I mean, we were on the brink of civil war. By the way, I'm not putting that past anyone at the moment, but, you know, we were on the brink of civil war, and now all of a sudden, like, um, we're using this virus, this medical emergency to come together in a sense. And by the way, it's not really coming together because, again, just a few days ago, you walk outside with a mask on and people are like, bro, look at that retard, look at that idiot, look at that moron. Now you walk now you walk outside without a mask on and people are like, bro, look at that guy. Oh my god, I can't believe he's not wearing a mask. Oh, what a pariah. Oh. So we're moving into a, a, a brand new world very quickly. One world in which no one even thought possible just a few weeks ago. Alright? And now Again, you know, what I was talking about earlier, you know, being out here in Mexico and that whole deal and that situation, you know, the fact that, you know, out here, I never thought that, you know, we were going to deal with that kind of stuff, that people were going to be a little bit more uh, open-minded, free-minded, uh, people were not going to be that ridiculous, that or everything. But again, you know, every time that I open up my Instagram or my Twitter, or again, as you saw in the last video, whether we have, you know, cops, military, and all that stuff, you know, surrounding um, you know the, the the cities and and the public areas and uh, telling people go home and do this and do that even though it's still voluntary it's happening you know I, I saw a video earlier of a, of a helicopter on the beach here in Mexico um, you know telling fishermen hey get out of the water stop fishing now again it's not to the extent as you're seeing in the US where they're arresting somebody for paddle boarding, boarding in the water but just about the same almost we're getting there now i don't think that they're going to infringe that heavily on people's rights out here i'm um, just like in india and other places but um as you're seeing what's happening in the u.s that you are getting arrested for going to the beach or you are getting a thousand dollar fine or or so on and so forth that's happening in the u.s that's soon to happen in canada that's already happening in europe and, and in a lot of other countries like that but in countries like let's say mexico india and others you're seeing other forms of that same control and so it starts making you ask the question well what the hell is really going on here what what's uh what's all this about you know, out here in Mexico, they've already, for, for a few weeks now, they already have a special app so that you can get on the app and uh, tell them all about your symptoms and then if you have it, so they can track you and this and that and blah, blah, blah. And everybody out here is like, wow, yeah, Mexico's awesome. Look how ahead of the game we are. What No other country has anything like that. And I'm thinking to myself, man, that, that, that's already been in the works for a while. They're introducing that to Mexicans because, you know, Mexicans don't really have anything like that available. But a good majority of the world, with your smartphones and living in first world countries, they already have all that shit on you. You, you don't need, you know, they don't need a special app for you to provide that. They already got it. All right? And so, you know, basically, it, 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 like a few months ago, you know, we, uh, uh, someone like me never thought in a million years that we would get to like this dystopia type thing. 
like that quickly overnight so fast um, in fact that you, you know you hear me talking about Bitcoin and the, this new technology and near zero marginal cost and just all of these things positive optimistic as to like yeah we're never gonna be enslaved by these um, freaking overlords and blah 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 we're gonna and now all of a sudden you know basically like it usually always happens and right in front of our eyes everything just got taken away everything is under complete control we have no voice i mean again is not only i feel i was feeling inept up until i started to realize that everyone is inept no matter who you are out there there's nothing really you can do except comply i mean the only thing that we can do is start some sort of world revolution but we were we were already in the midst of that and they brought this upon the world uh, civilization or whatever you know what I mean in order to stop all of these riots all of these uh, protests that were happening all over the world okay you know everywhere from Mexico to the United States to um, to Europe you know France England Italy um, you know Hong Kong and I can go on and on and on and on and on you know what I mean all of these protests that were happening all over the world basically pushing back against that um, official narrative of uh, you know big government taking control of us and all this stuff and so what did the big government you know do what did these guys in power do they, they just they, they released this thing and then they really clamped down and really it showed us I mean as you guys can see they're showing us who's really boss who's the boss and who's in control and how much real control and how much power we actually have now we do have um, a way to fight back I mean basically all we got to do is just you know uh, drop this uh, you know bullshit you know that uh, you know what I mean that we're powerless and we have no power and like again realize that we have all the power and then just go and get that power back but that's not gonna happen because the scary part is the fact that right now no matter where you go or where you look now it's turning into communism like right in front of your eyes no matter what country you're in because again even if you know as I'm out here in Mexico I am um, you know the, the now it is um, you know when you for example I saw a video today of a Mexican you know just traveling all right from one place to the other um, outside of the city and he was going to a little Pueblo a little village to drop something off for a family member and he was stopped there and um, you know basically um, the, the you know, it was a police checkpoint and um, the police officer was like hey you got to tell me who you are you can't come in here what are you doing you know uh, blah 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 you know just going through the whole protocol and uh, basically um, the Mexican was saying and, and his wife you know they were both in the car and, but just the guy was talking the Mexican guy was like no I don't have to tell you who I am I don't get to give you ID I don't gotta do none of that shit who the fuck are you you ain't got no power get the hell out of my face and that was like the whole thing and basically the cop was the one that was recording the interaction and he's the one that put it on Facebook to shame that guy because again the cops and, and, and the police and all that shit don't have that power as they do in other parts of the world yet out here in Mexico yet I say yet why because as he was um, as that cop was recording the interaction that again he could not stop that guy from doing what he was doing he could try but he couldn't um, so anyways he recorded the whole interaction and then the cop was the one that put it on Facebook all right in a sense of like to show the the public out here and to shame that guy all right into staying at home and how dare he go out and endanger the public and all of this and blah 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 and this and that and so that is now the the reality that we're going to be dealing with going forward the fact that now all this propaganda has been so strong and is so um in, ingrained in people's brains already in such a short amount of time remember it only takes 30 days in order to create a brand new habit and we're already way past 30 days um you know right now again you know the cop was the one that was being seen all of a sudden as the good guy the great guy for not allowing that individual to do what he had you know to do you know again to just deliver that clothes to family member whatever the hell he was doing um and now again we the people are the ones that are ashamed for not wearing a mask for not constantly washing and scrubbing our hands you know for, for not constantly doing any of these things and it just keeps getting more and more worse in fact right now e e even though there's a lot of you guys that love and listen to me all the time you guys are probably a lot of you guys are out there 
You know, a lot of you guys agree with me that all this is way overblown and insane, but a lot of you guys out there are looking at me like, again, like if I, I just spit in your face and I punched you or slapped you across the face, you know, like, and again, it's like, how, how did we let ourselves get to this point? We, we as the people, start, have not been believing our government or, or media or any of these entities for the longest time already, and now all of a sudden, we believe. And, as, and even though we keep getting presented more and more and more evidence that, you know, a lot of this stuff is propaganda, and, and a lot of this stuff is not, you know, necessarily for the good of the people, we, people just keep digging in their heels and they keep believing it even more. They just want to believe it more and more and more. I mean, it's it's insane. And to, and again, you know, we got to remember, guys. I mean, I'm not trying to downplay this at all. You know, this is like anything else out there that kills people. All right, there's a lot of things out there that kill people. But why are we treating this with the veracity as if it really it really was like a a, a virus that was like the end of civilization? And when in reality, it's not even anywhere close to it. And we know that. No matter how much they try to inflate and pump the numbers and and all of this stuff. If you just compare them to the normal numbers that we have every season, they don't, they're don't they just about the same. And again, it was, I mean, in, in the worst case scenario, it's a really strong, strong flu. And where there's a, and again, you know, now going back to the fact that China and the U.S. are at war. Again, you know, we, we already know that this virus, you know, has already been studied under plenty of microscopes and by plenty of scientists and everyone can agree that this did not occur in nature. This was created in some sort of laboratory. Now, who gives a crap who created it? The point is, is that it was created in a laboratory, all right, and thus dispersed upon the public, you know, uh, as a biological weapon. And as of now, you know, not only do we have two or three strains of this shit, we got up to 10 strains from the last time I heard. And they're all over the place. And it's just gonna keep getting worse and worse. And as again, when you're seeing certain countries, you know, like China and the US, how they're dealing with it or other countries in Europe how they're dealing with it as opposed to like other countries around the world and how they're dealing with it. so let me explain so look at how the US is dealing with it right now the most powerful strongest country in the world and it's a hot mess it's a disaster no matter where you are in a good majority of the United States of America it's a major disaster now not everywhere I, I mean I talked to a lot of you guys all over the US in some places you guys are barely even seeing or feeling any effects of this but again um, and a good majority of the US you guys are definitely feeling the effects of this one way or the other and then when you come out here to like a country like Mexico or even India it, it's not even anywhere close all right it's not even anywhere close to the the paranoia and the insanity that has uh, that is occurring throughout the world and I mean but at the end the one thing that we can all agree on and see is that there is a lot of control being now thrust upon us and again depending on what country you're in depending on how that control is being you know taken again you know I am surprised as hell like a lot of Mexicans are very very surprised um, that live out here the ones that think like I think you know we're very surprised as to how you know how much the public has turned on it on, its, on itself has turned on each other overnight again just like you would see in Nazi Germany just like you see like you would see in communist Cuba and other regimes like that where it's basically like if you hear <coughs> a cough you know I already got my neighbors you know what I mean tattletailing on me or whatever it is you know what I mean and it's just like one insanity after another like I look wow I'll, I'll call it out one of you know one of my neighbors out here you know they're in and out of their house every few minutes again I got my door wide open I can see them now every time they're out they always got a face mask on but it's like the point I'm making is is like again if you're like in this quarantine and you really care so much about this thing then it's one or the other you know why are you out all of all day what are you doing what do you, 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 you know what I mean? It's like, just, ah. and then, you know, someone like me, you know, I, I'm not really, you know, per se, like scared of this situation. I'm more of the, you know, hey, I, I want to respect everybody's, um, you know what I mean? Like a space and decision, you know, to do this or what have you and their fears. So that that's why I kind of like remain at home a little more than normal now, because, well, why am I going to be out there? You get what I'm saying? Like, um, getting all kinds of dirty looks from all kinds of people and especially someone like me which I already get looks people already know a lot of people know who I am and stuff so why am I gonna be out there out and about you know what I mean like even 
putting things in people's minds as to like, you know, look at this guy, he's out, he's out without a mask, why is he out, why is he doing this, why is he whatever? So look, I mean, that's why even some of my videos have been lacking on the other channel, you know what I mean? Where I haven't been making that many, maybe once, one a week or two a week, you know, because of that same scenario, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't want to, you know, be going out there, you, you feel me, and um, be a pariah, you know, in my own community, you know, just because, uh, you know, I want to get some sun or I want to get like a, a little bit of fresh air. I mean, it's very, it's very weird how all this just turned. I mean, I myself came from the United States, so I already know how some of this behavior already took. I went to Cuba a few months ago, so again, I got a first-hand perspective view, um, a feel for what the, what is actually happening right now. And um, you know, I get, <coughs> I get actually some uh, you know reports from Cuba from some people that I know out there, and they're telling me how. You know, shit's getting pretty bad out there too, you know, meaning that they're, and again, it's already communist out there. They already got the total control. So basically, they've um, quarantined whole neighborhoods, okay? Basically, like, quarantined to the point where you can't even leave your home to get food or water or anything, and you would have to reach out to some sort of government entity or some shit like that in order to get what you need in order to survive. That's how bad the quarantine situation is over there in some areas. So. Um, you know, basically, you know, the, this, this whole scenario has kind of like taken the whole world by storm. The whole world all of a sudden now is on house arrest. Um, every single country seems to be following protocol in one shape, form or another. Um, there, you know, to me, it's, it's looking very much like dystopia moving forward. Now, um, I don't want to be all pessimistic and, and, and negative and all this stuff, you know, here at all, because... You know, right now, you know, we're, we're in, a, in a moment in time in human history which is going to be a lot of strife and a lot of, uh, you know, uh, pushback from the people. But we, the people, will be able to move ahead. I mean, we always do. One thing that I was, wa uh, one thing that I was doing, like a lot of people are doing out there right now, is we're watching a lot of movies. We just are. Yeah, by the way, just a little trials and tribulations out here of uh, filming on my big professional camera in 100 plus degree weather because, yeah, that's how hot it is right now. And by the way, there was someone out there in one of my last videos that was saying like, oh, the disease can't live in anything over 80 degrees or something like that. Listen, man, again, have you ever even ever, have you ever even picked up a history book? I mean, imagine how hot it was 500 years ago without AC, without fans, without anything. And uh, remember how um, we, the the Spanish and a bunch of other uh, what is it like people from Europe were coming over here and giving people blankets, okay, full of disease and killing them in a lot hotter weather than this, okay? Let's not forget that. Now, granted, it is so hot outside that I could literally fry an egg on the sidewalk. I, I could probably do that. All right. So yeah, I, I don't know how how a disease would live on a surface out here. So granted. Okay, but don't be getting it twisted that just because you know you're in a hot weather environment that it's going to be changing. I mean, it's it's not gonna, it's it's uh, that the virus can't survive. Again, look at Miami, look at New Orleans, look at a lot of places in the South. Okay, but uh, but I digress. So about what I was saying earlier, you know, based before I stop this, all right, like a dumbass. All right, what I was saying earlier was the fact that you know, like a lot of us in right now, uh, we have a lot of extra time on our hands, so we're watching movies or we're watching shows on Netflix or what have you. We're doing a lot of these things. So w one of the things uh, one of the things that I was doing this last weekend uh, with my wife is we were watching a lot of movies. We, I, we watched Apocalypto and we watched uh, Braveheart, okay? All, both in the same day. And um, wow, you know what I mean? Like I haven't seen both of those movies in a very long time. But after watching the histo those movies, there were, by the way, you have to watch Apocalypto. I know a lot of you guys have already seen Braveheart, but I, I implore you guys to watch him again right now, because if especially Braveheart, okay? Um, but if, if, if you watch these movies again right now, a lot of these things will start really, you know, taking, you know, you would understand a lot of the things that are happening right now a little more. And also, you out there would not be looking at the world moving forward as in such a in such a negative and pessimistic way because if you remember what was happening back in the in the 13th century or you know 1200 uh, tw yeah 1200 AD you know uh, around the time of Braveheart and um, you're like how the hell did we as humans survive that but we survived that 
I mean, that was like basically in the middle of the dark ages. And if you remember anything about that movie, by the way, again, please watch that movie, but you know, no spoiler alert here, um, because again, this is all history, but England was, uh, you know, basically encroaching upon, uh, what was it? The Scot Scotland, right? Scotland and Ireland. And so a lot of the same things that were happening back then, back then, are, ha are the same things that are either happening right now or we're afraid of them happening in the very, 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 very near future. All right, where everybody, again, if you remember the movie from, if you remember Braveheart, you know, pretty much at the beginning of the movie, um, where everybody's in their little village, and again, in fucking medieval times, and the whole thing. But yet, if you said the wrong thing, you did the wrong thing, you walked the wrong way, you, listen, the king's men were right there to impose their, you know, laws and impose their way of life upon you. All right, and um, how did this um, Braveheart character come along, and how did this, uh, how did the freedom of uh, the, that land come about? Well, basically because the guy Braveheart, again, not spoiler alert, this is all within the first little bit of the movie. Um, you know, the, the English, you know, for you know, for lack of a better uh, description here, you know, they killed off his family, killed off his uh, first love, you know, pretty much killed and pillaged everything that the fucking guy ever loved, all right? And so it got to the point when he got a little older, all right, old enough, you know, to be Braveheart, um, where he's like, you know what, fuck this shit, you know what I mean? I'm, we're, we're, I'm, I'm taking it all back because they took everything away from me. I got nothing to lose, so we're gonna take it back. And what did they do? They fought the fucking English and they fucking pushed them back and they got their land back, all right? And again, just, you know, watch a movie, you'll see what I mean. But, you know, when you're watching that movie now, in today's world, in today's context, and you understand a lot of things that are going on, you're like, holy guacamole. Are you kidding me here? It, it's, it's like it's happening now. And so, when, especially in, when, when you watch Apocalypto, which again, please, I implore you to watch that movie. When you watch that movie as well, you know what I mean? Like, and you're watching, you're like, wow, well, I mean, this could be taking place right now. And as you're watching the movie, and the movie just keeps getting more fucking crazy and intense, you're like, holy shit, you know, wait a minute, a lot of this is... I don't want to spoil that one. I mean, I really don't want to spoil Apocalypto. I know a lot of you guys have not seen that. Watch it. I, if, there's, if there's some homework, all right, you're going to take out of this one for once, watch those two movies, but definitely watch Apocalypto, all right? Both Mel Gibson movies, by the way, both amazing. Great guy. I don't want to get into... By the way, not, I don't want to say great guy, meaning, you know, great fucking movie guy, all right? I don't want to get into the whole personal fucking thing there. All right, that's another story for another day, another theory for another episode, for another show, whatever. But the point is, is that when you watch those movies, when you read books, when you start taking the historical perspective to a lot of the, the things that are happening right now, when you just look at well, what, what happened just a hundred years ago, all right? You go a little further back than a hundred years ago. 1880, 1890, 1900, 1910, but no, who the hell even talks about that time, all right? But if you know what the hell was going on back then, and in the 19, I mean, it's like, well, I mean, I already know, I mean, it's all, again, history doesn't um, repeat, it rhymes. So, you know, right now, we're looking at the, the, you know, as we're moving into the 2020s, you know, most Americans are looking like, oh my God, the economy was already tanked. There were so many poor people on the street. Things were already so, so, so bad. How much worse can they get? And that's where I'm gonna give you a little quick history lesson. They're gonna get a lot worse for some people. And they're gonna get pretty good for other people, okay? And it's gonna, and then that cycle is gonna keep continuing to go that way. You gotta remember that back then was the time of the the robber barons and the and the, you know what I mean, like the all, all of these um, you know the rich guys like the Carnegies and the Rockefellers and uh, and uh, J P Morgans of the world and all of these guys, all right. And you know we're now in a world in which you know these guys have now been replaced by the Zuckerbergs of the world, the Jeff Bezos of the world, and. Uh, you know the Bill Gates of the world, and and so on and so forth, and uh, you know we look at them through a historical perspective, like oh Rockefeller Center, Carnegie Hall, all of this, uh, you know, all of this amazingness that they did and they they provided to the public. But when you look at their actual history, what they did up until they were being philanthropists, 
Bef up until then, they were not good guys. And so look at like someone like Bill Gates right now. You know, someone was asking me like, oh, you don't like Bill Gates in the comments? And I'm like, again, do you, do you even know what the guy is doing? What he's behind right now? I mean, he is pretty much one of the masterminds behind this whole scenario right now going on. You know, one of them anyway. I mean, for sure. And, you know, we, I mean, honestly, you know, a lot of people out there think that, uh, you know, um, when they see him and uh, Jimmy Buffett, I was about to say, him and Warren Buffett, you know, B BFFs and like, oh, Bill Gates looks up to Warren Buffett. Listen, guys, don't be getting it twisted, right? It's more like, um, I think it's the other way around, where it's more like Warren Buffett is like, yes, Mr. Gates, how, how can I serve you? All right, like a lot of people are. And by the way, Mr. Gates is also going to other individuals out there that we don't even know who they are, invisible people. Yes, master. All right. So, and, uh, you know, I could go on and on about that. You know, basically, you know, everything that he's doing about, you know, ID 2020, where he wants to, um, you know, uh, get everybody to have a coronavirus, uh, you know, um, some sort of uh, <clears throat> a vaccine. Um, so basically how he wants, how he envisions the future. Okay. How quick, you know, how funny that all this is already just there. Everything takes forever to create, but yet. You know, this virus came like that, and we have all of this infrastructure in order to deal with the virus like that. How, how uh, coincidental, right? Anyways, I don't believe, I'm not a big guy on uh, coincidences, all right? But anywho, you know, um, his, whole, I, his whole idea of, um, you know, um, of ID 2020, which is all part of Agenda 21, or what's that, Event 201? You know, again, too many similarities, right? Um... But yeah, you know, one of the things that he wants to do about the whole ID 2020 is that he envisions a world in which everyone out there, you know, has an, a digital ID, in which everyone out there has uh, vaccines and everything can be traced. And so basically how it's going to work in his vision um, is that in the future, you're going to go do X, Y, Z, you know, whether it's uh, get your license, um, you know, buy a house, whatever, anything, you know, any kind of, um, you know, any kind of transaction that you would need to, you know, um, come you, that you would need to do some sort of government paperwork with. Uh, how it's going to work is that they're going to just basically ask you, yeah, can we see your ID, please? And that's going to be the ID 2020. And on the ID, you know, one of the first things it's going to check is, uh, are you vaccinated with, you know, for coronavirus? And that's it. Are you vaccinated for coronavirus? And it's not whether you had it or have it or no, 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 no. Is are you vaccinated or not? If you're vaccinated, then you can proceed. If you're never, if you're, if you're not vaccinated, then you cannot proceed. And that's it. We're also going to be seeing the social credit score. We're already going to start it. We, people are already talking about that shit, even in places like Mexico. Meaning that, yeah, you know, certain businesses and certain people out there should get punished even harsher for not listening to the voluntary, okay, the voluntary um, government. Uh, mandates to stay at home so those people that don't listen to the government voluntarily they should be punished and those that do listen they should get rewarded again part of that whole social credit score so again you're, you're even starting that's why it's a very scary moment that we're transitioning um, from one to the other you know because again even in a place like here where you would never even hear or or even have fathom things like that in a place like Mexico very very independent very sovereign very uh, you know libertarian and thinking all of a sudden you're seeing how all this propaganda can quickly turn to people and same as in the US how quickly we went from like in the US remember overnight remember just a few months ago we didn't want Bernie Sanders we didn't want socialism we don't want UBI we don't want any of this shit and now all of a sudden at the, again, I keep snapping my fingers. That's how quick these things are happening. At the snap of a finger, Mr. Trump is saying, hey, I'm going to give all you motherfuckers $1,200 to shut the fuck up. And what is everybody doing? Everyone out there, all of a sudden, you see it with a, you know, uh, uh, Make America Great Again fucking sticker on the back of their car. All right? Yeah, I mean, Make America Great Again hat should, you know, might as well just fucking, you know, uh, be this now. And again, I don't want to fucking hear it out there with all these Q guys and this and that or whatever. I don't want to fucking hear it, okay? I'm the kind of guy that I just call it like it is. If all of a sudden tomorrow Trump, you know, fucking uh, really steps on the neck of the Fed, destroys the banking system, you know, and becomes the almighty king of the U.S. and the world, and, and he deserves to be on Mount Rushmore, listen, man, I'll be the first motherfucker to be like, hey, I was wrong. I, I'm going to eat my fucking words, 
And um, yeah, you know what I mean? Thank God that we have this guy Trump. Ass but that's again, I would only do that assuming that he would, you know, do the right thing for the American people. But as of now, he's not doing any of that. Everything, every move that he's making is a complete opposite um, as to what you would want. But a lot of people out there, even a lot of people that hated Trump are now on the Trump train because he's handling the virus situation great. And again, I just keep thinking about 9-11. I keep thinking about how quickly the, the sentiment around the country changed from one second to the other. And we're seeing the same thing over and right now. We're seeing so many people all of a sudden be totally fine with socialism. So many people are right now are totally fine with fucking tattling on your neighbor Nazi Germany style. You know, so many people are totally fine, you know, with fucking, you know, taking away all your freedoms, taking away all of your liberties, taking away every single fucking thing that makes America, America. I mean, I don't know what else to say, you know what I mean? Like, if this is uh, totally okay for a lot of, uh, you know, third world countries. It's totally fine for a lot of places out there with communist regimes and shit. In fact... I heard a joke the other day. I mean, again, I'm not even sure if it's a joke, but I'm going to go with joke on this one. Um, but basically, I saw it on Twitter where um, it said, like, North Korea, um, North Korea, um, uh, what is it? North Korea found its first COVID-19 case. Shortly after, they had zero cases because that, that one guy was shot in the head. Something like that. And again, I don't know if that was true or if it was not or if it was a joke. But the point is, again, countries that are already full-blown communist, full-blown whatever, they're not, you know, they're not even blinking twice. You know, they're more like, yeah, great, wonderful, virus, whatever. You know, more control, more this, more that. You know what I mean? But um, a lot of countries around the world, you know, that are not used to this are now, you know, getting a very quick, rude awakening, something that I've been telling you guys for a very long time, that it was just going to happen like that. Look, even me, you know, for the longest time, I was all, oh, America's great, America's awesome, back when I was in the States, you know, many years ago, and, um, and I, and, you know, again, even though I didn't agree with the corrupt uh, cops and politicians and all this, I was like, well, you know, this is the way it is, and we're trying to fix it, and we're this, and blah, 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 and I was always, like, kind of making excuses like a lot of people are out there are, up until the day in which the system fucking caught me, you know what I mean, and the same, what do I mean by the system caught me, you know, again, this could happen to anyone, you know, meaning that the wrong cop stops you and makes your life a living hell forever, or, you know what I mean, you have a medical emergency, or, you know what I mean, just pretty much life, you know, when life happens, all of a sudden, when you're in a place like the U.S., all right, and life happens, you are quickly reminded, like a punch to the face, all right, that um, you have no, no rights, you have no liberties, you have no nothing, you have no freedom, you have nothing. All right, and so a lot of people out there, you know, when they get caught in the system, one shape, you know, one form or another, um, from that point on, they really, really are against the system because they realize already, you know, what I mean, what a what a fake, phony, and false illusion this whole thing is. But there's a lot of Americans out there that were still under this illusion that uh, you know, government's great, America's great, the whole fucking thing is great, you know, blah blah blah, until a few weeks ago, and now slowly but surely a lot of people are realizing oh my god this is pure hell all right and that's make and that's describing it as best as possible but you know that's what a lot of people are starting to come to realize now you know what i mean that wow you know what i mean like uh, all this uh, totalitarian uh movement regime what have you you know what i mean that now has been set upon the u.s this wasn't something that was just like overnight this was something that was already here have been has been in place for a while and now it's clamping down now there's a reason an excuse to really you know put all this into play and we're seeing it where everything that i've always been talking about and a lot of people have been talking about everything from fema camps to um get your real government id because you're not going to be leaving your 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 city your community your your county your state all right um, you're going to be asking to, you know, they're gonna, you're going to be asked to start asking for papers and presenting your papers and shit like that. And again, I, I hear people leaving in the comments and shit like that's happening in Mexico. It's not because, again, just from the video of the example I was telling you earlier where, you know, again, the cop was trying to shame the citizen because that's how little power they have in comparison. Okay, so there's no cop is going to be at, if they can't even get the guy's ID or arrest him, all right, how the fuck are they even going to be asking for any kind of papers? Now, that 
whole idea of like, hey, present your papers, let me see your papers, or you're gonna get shot in the head right here. That's only gonna be happening in the US and other countries like that because again, you know, we've given them that power. All right? But, uh, you know, right now, you know, right, you know, like the, this whole switch into, um, you, you, you know, we've been seeing so many things happening in the last recent days and weeks and no one's really, you know, people are just like, kind of like skipping over things. Um, but what, what the hell is up with all of these prisons across the U.S. releasing all of these prisoners all at once and subsequently now starting to arrest people for missing curfew or for, you know, the dumbest, you know, shit that has to do with this new quarantine thing. All right, now, and, and, and as this disease keeps getting worse, because to me, that's what I think is happening. I think that this is a war between China and the US, but at the same time, it's a war that each country kind of like wants to be a part of, because as you guys already know how war works and how all these things work, it's, it's all a cycle. You know, the people, the money printers, the money printers don't give a crap who's fighting. They don't give a crap who leads these countries. They just want to be in control of the money. And so right now, if uh, let's say China and the U.S. are fighting and, and, and going at war and destroying each, other country, each other's countries and they have to rebuild them, again, all that takes money. You know, money buys bombs. Money also builds buildings. So again, the same money that is printed in order to build the bomb Take that bomb on a plane, drop that bomb on another country, destroy that land, have that land, you know, get rebuilt again. It's all money, man. It's all cycle, okay? So again, you know, back to like, you know, the Chinese uh, emperor or whatever the hell, he's not the one that's really in power. He's just a figure, same as, you know, um, the United States president and so on and so forth. You know, again, this is even more, um, there's even more evidence to that because um, why would they be allowing all of these things that are happening unless there's an agenda? And so, of course, you know what I mean? With destruction, you know, there's gonna become, a, there's gonna be a lot of death. There's gonna be a lot of horribleness that comes with it. And, um, you know, back during World War II, we had internment camps. Um, these FEMA camps that we already have all over the country, all these uh, body bags that the, you know, um, the government keeps, the Pentagon keeps asking for more body bags, um, digging mass graves. Um, we have um, all these uh, military vehicles all over the U.S. Um, we have the FEMA camps. We have the internment camps. We have all of these things, you know, opening up. Uh, and, um, you know, what's going to happen here? You know, who's going to be put in these camps? You know, um, if we go to war with Mexico, for example, they're going to start putting Mexican-Americans in these camps? Um, if we go to war with China, is everyone that looks Asian going to start being, being, being put in these camps? Or are the people that are going to be put in these camps are people that all of a sudden, if you walk out on the street without a mask and without any um, regard, okay, for your fellow man due to the virus situation, are you the one that's going to be put in the camps? All right. Moving forward, we're already seeing a lot of people out there that are constantly, you know, um, talking about the fact that, oh, things are not gonna be the same ever again. I'm never gonna be able to, uh, you know, uh, I'm never gonna be able to like hug someone ever again or, or give them a, a, a handshake or, or have any, any kind of interaction like that again without, you know, going, getting over this trauma. I mean, I don't know. To me, my first reaction still to people is like to give them a hug and, and give them a handshake. I have to kind of like, uh, I, as I see the other people kind of put, you know, walk pushing away is like when I, you know, I kind of push away. I'm like, oh, hey, sorry, sorry about that. Um, but yeah, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, it, it's a thing that, you know, we are conditioning the human behavior, the human psyche into something completely different now. You know what I mean? We're, we're now gonna start normalizing things like social distancing. We're gonna start normalizing things like, uh, you know, wearing a mask, using a lot of hand sanitizer, which again, if you know anything about, you know, hand sanitizer and uh, the overkill of antibacterial stuff, you know, the fact that it kills a lot of really good bacteria, it kills a lot of really good healthful stuff that you need in your world and your, you know, everything. And now all of a sudden you're gonna start you know, making everything, um, you know, uh, what is it like, uh, disease free? I mean, again, you know, like, uh, just like George Carlin said, you know, the fact that, you know, someone like me that, you know, doesn't, like most people out there, we have a really strong immune system because we're constantly just putting it to work. But if all of a sudden now you are not putting your immune system to work because you're constantly, you know, um, cleaning everything and you're constantly putting antibacterial stuff on everything and all this stuff and you make everything so homogenized to the point where, you know, 
you will never even encounter any kind of uh, disease. It's gonna come that when eventually you do encounter some sort of cold or virus or disease, it's gonna hit you like like nothing's ever hit you before. And this is just the reality of it, you know what I mean? Like, um, so yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I really do think that we're gonna be seeing a lot of world changes uh, um, happening from this moment forward. Um, and, and right now, even though there, it's not being really discussed that we're like at some sort of war with China or anything like that, but we are, I really do think that we are. And uh, <clears throat> you're seeing even countries like Russia kind of closing themselves off, certain countries in, in uh, Europe and others around the world. Um, and at the same time, you're seeing a lot of action happening all over the world right now. Um, you're seeing um, all of a sudden <clears throat> the United States said as of a few days ago that we are now going to start um, the war on drugs over again because of course in the middle of a pandemic and in, in the middle of this medical emergency that the United States is uh, <clears throat> going under we, we have to we have to reignite that war on drugs uh, and start going after um, Venezuela and southern Mexico and Guatemala and all these areas you know why because it's not necessarily like you know like they were saying it's not necessarily about the drugs and all that deal but now that these drugs could be infected with the virus and now it's a different story and now they're trying to infect the people with the virus or, or whatever bullshit they're trying to ram down your throat so as you guys already know the economy right now is at a standstill. It's frozen in time. Um, there's no movement anywhere. They're pumping money like crazy into the markets. It's not making a dent. There's no money velocity. Um, nothing is really um, making sense anymore. So what would we need? What would we need as a jump starter, okay, to get the world economy back going full force again? Well, maybe World War III or some shit like that. And again, you can already see it because right now, Again, anyone that knows any kind of history, you know, what are we looking at? We're looking at right now that Maduro in Venezuela, that's the president of Venezuela, that he rammed a U.S. ship or a civilian ship. Yeah, he rammed a civilian ship. Um, and I don't know. I don't know the, the, the details of the stories. I don't know any of that stuff because, again, I don't believe any of it until I hear a little bit more of an official story, all right? I'm, I'm just listening. I'm, I'm just repeating the talking points that I heard on the BBC, which, is, again, is not necessarily uh, the best... Uh, whatever but i mean i've yet to hear anything out of venezuela or anything like that yet but you know basically that what was happening you know what i mean uh you know right now if this could be an, a false flag you know like we saw during the spanish american war like we saw during pearl harbor like we've seen you know 9 11 like we saw over and over and over and over again i think that this is just another one i mean they love they love to do things with ships they do it all the time all right so this is just another one of these, all right? Where now, again, you know, they're saying that Venezuela rammed the civilian ship or what have you, and now the U.S. Navy has to get it involved, and the U.S. Navy now is going to use that as an excuse to, you know, what? Invade Venezuela? Are we serious right now? So, you know, again, if, if for anyone that knows or if it's been following a lot of the stuff I, I, I talk about here, um, Venezuela has Russian and Chinese assets, just like there are a lot of Russian and Chinese assets all throughout the Caribbean and through all these waters. So now the fact that the United States is saying that we're going to be engaging further in the Caribbean with our Navy and, and so on and so forth, and that we're going to start uh, going after the cartels, like if they're terrorists and all this stuff, and it's like, I don't understand how people out there are okay with this i mean again you know i thought we were dealing with an emergency why can't people just make up their minds huh what is it what are we doing here all right what what is it that we care more about so anyways so that's you know that's something we're dealing with there that's something to be keeping an eye on plus the fact that you know also the u.s is still putting pressure on iran and trying to do stuff over there but it seems like we are disengaging from that area um, you know as we're engaging in venezuela and as we disengage from venezuela we engage in in, in iran it's back and forth now what's going to happen are there going to be any kind of fireworks is there going to be any kind of anything we don't know but something something is going to be coming down the pike for sure and and and, and to me as i see all the whole world at one time going into lockdown that's when I started calling foul and I'm starting to think, wait a minute, you know what I mean? Why is the whole world on lockdown just for a few thousand deaths? You know what I mean? A few million, I get it. A few thousand? Out of a few billion? Come on now. You know what I mean? What's going on here? What is this massive lockdown really all about? Are they just trying to tell the people or show the people how much power they have? 
or are they getting ready for something like a, I don't know, alien invasion, or probably something more realistic like World War III, or, or what? Um, is the US just basically in such control that and the banks are in such control that they can basically stop the whole world economy and um, do with it as they wish in order for them to issue in a brand new dollar or something of the sort in which you know they're trying to again you know um, exacerbate the death of the dollar the death of the US economy um, blame it on something blame this humongous downturn that we still have yet to see any you know, see the see the end result of you know, um, you know to blame it on that, because again, you know, if you guys think that thirty percent, you know, um, dropping thirty percent on the stock market and dropping thirty percent across the world was something, that's nothing, man. We still got way more to go, way more to go, and um, so again, is that you know the the reason why we're all on lockdown and the economy has stopped? Because that would be a perfect excuse as to you know, the, the economic uh, hardships that are, we're about to embark on as a world civilization. Is this, um, um, is this a controlled demolition of the human race in the sense of like, is this a way in order to really get humans to start dwindling in numbers, just like Bill Gates and a lot of others out there, you know, the Bilderberg group and so many have talked about over and over and over again, that we are at overpopulation, which we're not, which we're not, okay? Because again, um, you can, if you get, all the land on earth and you get like um what is it like all the people on earth i think ev everyone on earth could live in the united states of america alone and have like acres and acres of land okay all the billions of people okay so again i don't know about the math on that don't don't quote me on those things but the whole idea that just overpopulation and this overpopulation is killing the earth and it's bad it's 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 such a a fake narrative it's not even funny all right um the reality is, is that we got plenty of space but if um if we if we are supposed to have this new world in the in the vision of these overlords okay of ours you know whoever they are whether they're lizard people whether they're bankers whether they're fucking aliens who, who knows or evil satanists whatever they are um whoever they are um if the world that they envision is is all again you know everyone is living in these big mega major cities no one's living in the country or in the rural areas and um in that world in that scenario then yeah you know there 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 is a lot of people but in the reality is is like if people live like people then we got plenty of space plenty of room plenty of everything all right and this is the reality of it but you know, as, as like I was saying, and I mean, th this could be a controlled demolition of the human race in a sense. And so, you know, it could it's starting off with the virus, starting off with, uh, you know, the economic, um, the, the destruction of the world economy. And then slowly but surely, you would start seeing the world descend into chaos as things remain closed. Nothing can, uh, nothing can function like it used to. And everything just keeps getting worse and worse and worse and as people try to fight this the governments clamp down with their guns and their power and their military and we just keep spiraling down the toilet and the only ones saved would be ones that would be living already out off the grid henceforth why they don't allow you to live off the grid okay in many countries and many parts of the world so yeah i don't know what i mean honestly i have no idea what uh, could be transpiring here I have no idea how um, all of this is going to play out and turn out, but there is a lot to talk about. There is a lot to look at here. Um, there's too much to look at, okay, for us to keep looking away. And um, what are we going to be doing about this, okay? Are we going to be enslaving ourselves even further, or are we going to finally wake up one day and say enough is enough, all right? And unfortunately, I mean, I, I know a lot of you guys, um, just like me, we see that the world is, as each day goes on, we're just giving up and giving up and giving up. And I, like, all I'm trying to say is that, you know, we need, this is more than ever, we need to be pumping each other up. We need to, you know, um, be lifting each other up. We need to be helping each other. We need to be loving each other. We need to be understanding each other. We need to start using our brains further and start really figuring out what the hell we're going to do here because otherwise it's not going to end well and it's not that it's going to be the end of the human race because it's not again outside of some sort of meteor some sort of uh you know world war three nuclear annihilation of the planet something crazy like that which i don't see happening oh there's the meteor no, sorry 
something like that in which I don't see happening. Um, but you know, we as a human race have uh, gone through similar situations. That's why I tell you, watch Apocalypto, watch Braveheart, watch other movies like that, read some history, read some, uh, you know, go back into, you know, uh, you know, listen to uh, Dan Carlin, okay? Dan Carlin and he does, um, damn, what the fuck is it called? Hard hardcore history. Listen to some hardcore history, okay? That's the podcast, that's the, the thing. Um, Dan Carlin is an amazing gentleman, an amazing man, and he talks about all of these things, you know, in history. And uh, when you just look at, you know, you don't have to go as far back as like, uh, you know, Apocalypto, or you don't have to go as far back as uh, as a Braveheart or anything like that. You can just go as far back as just a few decades ago, a generation ago. It's not that far back, one or two people ago, and you will see how eerily similar things are. And in many cases, you know, we were looking at those times as like oh wow how is humanity going to survive this but not only did we survive but we thrived and we kept pushing humanity forward and we are now entering a moment in time that either a we can come out of this and push humanity into a renaissance or we come out of this and pushing in hum humanity into the dark ages, okay? But it's up to us. It's us, the people that have that control and that power. It's not the people above us, even though that's how it seems. But you gotta remember that right now, no matter what country you're in, they're putting all of us under house arrest. They got other citizens that play the role of uh, police officers or military to keep us inside. So everyone in a sense is like kind of like watching over each other while all the elites, whether it's uh, the Congress of the United States, whether it's the politicians out here in Mexico or other parts of the world and, and all the rich people and all the people that are really in power, um, what are they doing? You know, they're all on vacation. You know, that's it. You know, why don't, why don't they want you on the beaches? Because, well, that's their private beach. What the fuck are you doing on there? All right, and that's kind of basically how what's what's going on in a sense. And so while the world is in turmoil, the the elites are on vacation, just watching this thing play out. You know, watching the whole world uh, descend into chaos and turmoil, and it will because if we don't use things like love, cooperation, community, um, understanding, all of these um, things that they again they killed uh, John Lennon for you know just talking about these things. But if we don't use those things, then we are going to descend into fucking apocalypse now. It's gonna fucking be 1984. It is gonna be all of this dystopia, dystopian futures that we, you know, are always talking about. But if we work together, if we educate each other, if we help each other, if we push back against all of this together, then we actually have a chance. We actually do have a chance, all right? But again, none of this is gonna be easy. Why, that's why I bring up those um, movies and I, I keep bringing up those movies and movies in general because I think that that's a lot easier for people to swallow and to read a book in today's world. But again, you know, when you when you start seeing, you know, these things and you start, you know, like really understanding what's what uh, what happened already and what, you know, what what path we can actually take moving forward, then, um, you know, the, 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 the future is not so dire and uh, we actually have a lot more control and power than we actually think we do. But what are we gonna do? Are we gonna sit in quarantine, um, eating potato chips and playing video games all day and saying, oh, woe is me, yeah, well, whatever, you know what I mean? The world's gonna end anyway. Or are we gonna fucking sit here and make more videos, engage the community further, um, figure out a way to really, you know, um, move forward and fix this and really try to educate everybody out there to the truth and uh, or at the very least open up their minds and open up their 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 imagination to the possibilities of um, the realities that we're about to embark on whether they're the dark ages scenario or whether it's a renaissance scenario I truly believe that we're gonna be going into the renaissance but I also know that before the renaissance we had a brief moment in time called the dark ages okay and right now we could, again, depending on how we move about this, we could very quickly be moving into the Dark Ages and remain in the Dark Ages for a while, or we could just be, you know, again, the Dark Ages could just be a little tiny, tiny bump in the road, but it could be the catapult, the catalyst to take us to the Renaissance and beyond. All right, guys? All right, well, with that being said, it's a mouthful today, all right? I made an extra long episode because, well, I wanted to. All right, and um, as you guys already figured out by the end of this one, I had to piece it all together. I've just been recording here for about an hour or so, I don't know. And um, yeah, 
We made a great episode. I, I, I feel, you know, I got a lot of things off my chest. Um, there's a lot of things that I talked about, uh, a lot of more things that I want to continue to talk about, but um, we, we got to do this together. So now I put a lot of things on your plate, and now I want you guys to spit back to me what you guys think about everything that I said. Um, what you guys, if you guys want me to talk about a specific subject that I mentioned in today's video, um, if you guys want me to talk about XYZ more in depth, you guys want me to make an episode about whatever, let me know. And let's uh, do this together. Let's uh, work on this together. I'm going to be making a lot more episodes uh, in, uh, of, of this uh, kind into the future. Um, I, may, I, I do standalone videos because I get a lot of views as opposed to sometimes when I do live videos. I don't get that many views. It's all about the algorithm and the censorship and all of this crap that we're all working up against. But again, you know, I can sit here and talk about so many things. Okay? Like censorship. All right? But... We've already made plenty of videos on that, and we're going to be making plenty of videos not just on that, but other subjects moving forward, and you already know the deal. If you enjoy this kind of content, please don't forget to check out the podcast, okay? I have way more stuff on there that I don't necessarily have here. Um, check out my website where you can find me despite what they do to me here on YouTube because this channel is always under fire. I got two strikes currently. I got one community strike, one community strike and one copyright strike. Again, even the copyright strike, you know, what's from Google itself or again, um, what is it, content that I am legally able to use, but I'm not gonna get into that. But again, we don't know how, what could happen here. So that's why I implore you guys to always check out my website so that you know where uh, I am always at, all the links. You know, whether it's on Twitter, whether it's on Instagram, whether it's on the web, whether it's on all, all these other platforms like Library, BitChute, um, whatever you know what I mean like all of these I forgot them all now you know but you know what I mean um, and again I got my other YouTube channel where I talk about how it is to live out here as an expat in Mexico all right because I live out here and uh, yeah I'm an American I, I live in America that's where my address is and uh, and that whole deal but as you guys know in today's world um, a lot of us Americans are world citizens and we uh, travel and live abroad and that whole thing and uh, that's, you know, I got a whole channel dedicated to that, talking about those things, talking about what it is to live out here, how it is to live out here, and so on and so forth. So please check that out if you're interested in that. And um, I think that's it. Shameless plug is over. I want to give a big shout out to all my patrons out there, especially now during these hard times. Even bigger shout out, shout out to everyone out there that is always helping the show, you know, whether it's, um, you know, by sending a, a, a few uh, donations here and there or, or, or and again, you know, leaving comments, um, you know, adding more to the conversation, bringing more information to the conversation and, and again, you know, making this all a community effort. I want to give a big, big shout out and thank you to all of you guys. All right. And, um, and that's it, guys. You already know the deal. Don't forget to please like, please subscribe, please share, please hit that bell icon so you don't miss any upload, okay? Because I'm, I'm all over the place, as you guys already know. But more importantly than anything else, stay safe and stay awesome. Thanks again for watching. Love you guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.